applying finishing paths to part surfaces, control of all aspects of the toolpath is critical to the visual outcome of the part. One common pitfall of using a single toolpath to finish a large group of surfaces is that we have many different surface breaks or transitions that occur that each might require a different toolpath treatment to machine efficiently. Let's jump into a waterline path to demonstrate some of the changes to 3D HST linking in Mastercam 2022 that allow us to dial in the exact motion we want. We'll ball mill these light green surfaces and set the adjacent brown surfaces as avoidance. I'll use the Reset Stock Values button to zero out the wall and floor stock on my geometry groups here. In cut parameters, we'll set a two millimeter step down. One of the new additions to Waterline for 2022 is the ability to alter our cut style depending on if we're encountering closed or open contours. We'll leave closed contours at climb and set open contours to zigzag to reduce the time spent with the tool out of the cut. Now let's move on to our main focus. All linking motion control has been consolidated under the linking parameters page. This means that options groups like keep tool down, along with controls previously on the transitions page, now live under one roof. This allows us to get a better overall picture of what we're telling the toolpath to do in regards to linking. This also means that this page looks busy at first glance. So let's break it down and walk through a good workflow for setting up these parameters in a logical order on a new toolpath. We'll start with the left column, working top to bottom to define the broad strokes of our path linking. In the retract group, we'll set our clearance plane to be 100 millimeters and leave the type at full vertical retract. We see some new arc fitting options here that we'll come back to in a moment. The next options group, keep tool down within, is where we set the distance threshold for our in-path transitions. Any transition move that falls underneath the distance we set here will then be subject to the rules we set up in the last group, transition. We'll leave this set to 100% of the tool diameter. Without going further, let's generate this path and take a look at the motion. We can see the tangential ramp transitions up here where we have fully closed passes. And then we see these blend loops lower down where we change to zigzag motion on the open passes. I don't like these vertical transitions right against the walls of our avoidance surfaces so let's go back into linking and drill down deeper. Here in transition, we can turn on apply leads, which will take our purple transition motion and add leads to it from all the settings we have in the right hand column. We have a choice to apply leads to open passes or open and closed passes here. I'll leave this set to open passes, which were the only passes I wasn't happy with. Now we can look at the right hand column here. The two main groups, leads and secondary leads are how we build out our overall lead in or lead out. We'll keep our leads at horizontal leads with a two millimeter radius. We could also add a value in the distance field here, which adds tangential extensions to the toolpath before our lead behavior. We'll turn off secondary leads. With those changes, we'll regenerate again. Now we can see the horizontal arcs we've added on all of these one-way passes on the front of this boss. This gets our pass transition away from our part so we aren't scrubbing against the walls. We've still got this vertical move here, which is causing a vertical blend spline between passes. This is due to the overall linear entry exit value in the retract group. Zeroing this out will get rid of this small move on all lead-ins and allow a smooth blend between levels here in our example. Let's go back to cut parameters and set open passes to one way.
Now, we've got all these sharp corners where we come right down off of the rapid and into a horizontal arc lead-in. To change this behavior, let's turn on secondary leads. These are additional leads that stack on top of the regular leads. For these, let's make vertical 90 degree arcs with a radius of four millimeters and generate. Now we're vertically arcing in before performing the horizontal portion of our lead. We still have the sharp rapid corners for the retract moves here. So let's use one more addition to 2022 to change this behavior. In the retract group, we have the ability to arc fit a radius to all rapid retract motion in order to assist the machine in turning the corner, allowing for a smooth deceleration and acceleration to change direction, which not only cuts down on distance traveled, but can be easier on the machine as well. We'll leave that value at four millimeters and regenerate. Now we've rounded off all those sharp rapid corners. I'm going to turn on endpoint display here in the advanced toolpath dialog to look at one last item. If we zoom in on these arcs, we can see that they're actually linearized and made up of 15 to 20 straight segments. Depending on machine behavior for rapid motion, we may want to increase or decrease the posted point density of this arc fit. We control this through the linking arc tolerance field on the tolerancing page, which is entirely independent of the toolpath tolerance that governs the main path and lead motion. The linking additions we just reviewed apply to all 3D HST paths in Mastercam 2022, giving you the ability to drill down to the exact motion you need to create the perfect finish.